Hey, welcome. Today we're going to be talking about how to solve for components for a vector. Or in other words, how to use sine and cosine to be able to break a vector down into its components. So I'm going to go about showing you how to do that. So maybe you're a physics student and you need to know how to do a projectile problem that's launched at an angle, or you have a force problem that is at an angle, meaning not completely in the x-axis or completely in the y-axis, and think about how to go about doing that. So it says a young quarterback is learning how to throw a football and throws at 1.23 meters per second at an angle of 33.3 .3 degrees above the horizontal axis. What is the initial velocity of the x-axis and the y-axis? So the first thing we're going to do is draw a diagram of what's going on here. We know the initial velocity. We don't know a whole lot else. But in the initial diagram, we should also point out that this path of the projectile, it follows the path of a parabola. It does not follow the path of a triangle. So we want to say the projectile actually doesn't follow this path. That is just its initial velocity, which is important information, and we're going to use that. All right, so based on that, what I want to say next is really important. This is our major strategy that we're going to use here, and that is we take the vector and we make it into the hypotenuse of a right triangle. The very same vector over here becomes the hypotenuse of a right triangle. And then we can use trig functions to solve for our unknown legs, our opposite leg and our adjacent leg, using some simple trig functions. So just as a quick reminder, these are simple trig functions here. You may or may not need to memorize these. I'm not a big fan of memorization myself, but even I will suggest to my students that they memorize these because they come up so often in so many aspects of math and science. All right, so let's go ahead and think about how to apply this. We've got our sine function over here. So the sine of any angle is equal to the opposite leg over the hypotenuse leg in terms of lengths, right? So the length of the opposite leg here divided by the length of this hypotenuse leg right here. And that's our unknown. So let's go ahead and solve for that. I'm going to isolate for my unknown. And at this point, I'm able to plug in a little more in terms of the specifics from the right triangle that we're dealing with over here into this this general equation that we had up here. But notice I haven't plugged in my numbers yet. I'm going to go ahead and start plugging in my numbers and solve for my unknown. And so it turns out that this V initial in the Y is quite a bit less than 1.23. It's around actually a little more than half. So just keep in mind that that actually makes sense. This angle is not huge right here. So it makes sense to say that our initial velocity in the Y axis would not be as large as the overall initial velocity. All right, well, let's see how this works in terms of our V initial in the X. And so we would just use, in this case, the cosine function, and we would do the same thing that we have done so far, solve for our unknown, plug in our numbers. And so this is how you begin most projectile problems. And you're going to use components and solve using sine or cosine or sometimes tangent for force problems. And then for many, many other problems that use vectors in physics. It applies to all kinds of topics in physics. Anytime there's a vector, you may need to be able to use these skills to be able to solve for your answer for the problem. I will say at the end here that because we solved for this V initial previously and we know what the hypotenuse is, another alternative way of solving for your V initial in the X, of course, would be the Pythagorean theorem. So in any case, I hope this was helpful. If you have any comments down below, please let me know, and I hope you all have a great day. Take care.